Right, this is a special for all those who think. Oh, sorry, I'll do that up. Us doctors talk too much. Some may think talk more than others. Um, I promised you lesson three on the masters and who are they. So today is actually the 25th of June 2014. I needed to do this day um, because we needed an example. The example I'm going to give you today is a court case. Um, there's lots of coincidences when people get into trouble. Noddy got into trouble up before the beak to sort it out. I was in court, well I was called to court by uh, a gentleman who was being tried for uh, cultivation of cannabis for medical reasons. Ah. Mm. And uh, it was very clearly explained to the prosecution that he was acting as himself, defending himself, and he had witnesses to call. Now, I've been invited to court before, and I think you know that I like to use a, a name. It's a bit of power that people don't control. Now, that name, I uh, don't even need to use it right now, but it will be a perfect example of what will happen and how people are tricked and cajoled very clearly asked that I could not make it until after lunch. Do not let the court proceed before you call your witnesses. My name was presented to the prosecution, the Crown Prosecution Barrister, by sheer coincidence, known her for near on 20 years. So she doesn't know me. Anyway, I presented myself at court before lunchtime, which was a bit of a surprise for them, because I'd made it very clear that I wasn't able to make it till after lunch, but if I was needed, I would be there, and I was needed. So please do not try this before that time. I've had this once before, um, only about a month previous to that, where a gentleman had been um, accused and arrested for an alleged assault. In that case, Crown Prosecution rang me a couple of days beforehand and said I wouldn't be needed. And I thought it was unusual for a uh, Crown Prosecution to actually take the type of statement I made because I saw nothing. The gentleman could not be convicted because my evidence was enough to show there was no assault. So I was asked not to attend. I did question, say, so the defence knows that you're not asking me to appear now because I was their guest, their witness. And they said, nothing to do with us. Hmm. On the morning of the case, I arranged to go down to court just in case the information hadn't been passed over to that gentleman's defence. But on the way there I had a phone call from his defence saying, I think it was five to nine, um, we've just we've just been given your details. In other words, they've held it back to the last minute and asked me not to attend court. Just been given your details, would you attend? And again I said yes, but because of this make it very clear that I won't be able to make it till after lunch, but I will definitely be there no matter what. I think it's Absolutely disgusting that Crown Prosecution would hold back evidence. So let's just see if this happened again. Today, Wednesday, the 25th, I managed to get to court at the right time. Um, did a little bit of homework as well and the other doctors just going through this. It's, um, it's the code of conduct for the uh, Crown Prosecution Service. So I'm into court, I introduce myself to um, the Crown Prosecution's barrister and she was quite surprised Oh, 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 well, that's nice. Um, yes, it's the case you're on, and I'm here to give evidence. I showed her a couple of pieces of uh, evidence that we're producing, and she clearly informed me. She says, oh, the jury's just out deliberating one question. Now, that was worded very carefully, one question. So I waited in the courtroom and acknowledged my friend there. Very excited that I'd actually turned up, because I seem to have enough proof that what he's saying is true. And the jury was called in. The question he'd actually asked was, how do you plead? I mean, as do they find him guilty or not guilty? And 12 members of the jury, who were very sheepish about looking around the court, had obviously been asked to all find the same answer. The man is very silly and he's only going to get a slap on the wrist. He won't be locked up or anything. In fact, the judge at one point uh, had explained that he wished that all cannabis growers, or maybe in the prosecution, were like this, because he meant no harm but the 12 members of the jury were told, or suggested, that they handed over their power, 
And the judge again had told them how powerful they were. They could disregard, no matter all the letter of the law there, they thought it was inappropriate. But it would be very awkward for this gentleman to go any further. It's not very bright, could get into trouble. So now we're known that I'm in court. The trial has already gone through. Twelve members of the jury had already found him guilty because they'd been advised to, for his own sake. Those lovely men in the dark robes and the funny little white wigs were there to make sure that he, they protected him. Um, as soon as the case had actually been heard and the sentence was given, I think there was no money to pay, suspended sentence for 12 months, uh, nothing to pay, no fines, nothing at all. So this is probably what they were informed that it would be helpful. This is addressed directly to those 12 members because you know what happened next. I stood up and I thanked the members of the jury and I said, thank you 12 members of the jury for coming to such a quick decision on the guilt of this man. And because of that, oh, I may not have mentioned this, um, I suffer from a very, very nasty condition that has me in a wheelchair. <coughs> well, not really, because I seem to be able to cope with it by eating certain foods. This gentleman in trial there, anyway, I suggested to the jury, thank you for being very forthright and quick at doing this. And because of their decisions, I may, in fact, I, I may have said stronger words than that, uh, will be in a wheelchair within three weeks and smelling of poo, which isn't very pre pleasant. Um, wow, what can I say? The jury looked quite shocked. One gentleman of the jury, closest to me, looked like he was going to come over the box. He was very, very cross with me. And he shouted, why weren't you here earlier? Well, the truth being is I was there earlier, wasn't I? Crown Prosecution's job is not to bring the truth, it's to get prosecution, to get control, to get with the jury, to get the jury to hand over their abilities, their strengths, 12 good people, true, to a man with a wig and a cloak. I think his name was Wood something, that was the judge. At that point there, that judge then had rule over the court and um, everything had to be agreed. But if a single member of that jury, just one of you, including the gentleman stood up look quite cross, realise that you may have been misled. This is your chance, maybe I can't say your duty, this is your chance to simply go back to the courts and say, we do not believe that we were told the entire truth and we may have had evidence held back. The barrister, Lisa Hardy, number one chambers. I think it's your duty as well, but you stood there and tried to mislead me that the case was still going ahead and the question they were going deliberating was just another question, they'd be back into court. You didn't inform the judge that I was there. My client? No, my friend knew I was there and he'd asked for me to give evidence. You knew I was coming and the embarrassing thing is to say, I used to do this lady's hair. I did her hair for a wedding. She works very hard, she's a good lady. But, she didn't allow this evidence into court. You've got to ask why. Now, do you think it might be her duty? Um, do you mind if I borrow your code? This is your code, Lisa. Oh, I don't know, there's so many on here. General principles. We'll do 2.4. Prosecutors must be fair, independent and objective. They must not let any personal views about the ethnic or national origin, gender, disability, age, religion or belief. Belief is very important here political views, sexual orientation or gender, identity of the suspect, victim or any witness influence their decision. Neither must uh, prosecutors be affected by improper undue pressure from any source. Now, if you weren't under any pressure from any source, you made that decision to keep me out of court. Prosecutors must always act in the interest of justice and not solely in the purpose of obtaining a conviction. And this message for you, Lisa, I've known you a long time. Remember, I had to stop doing it here. I got very ill. Couldn't do it anymore. Stood there in front of you, explained what I was doing, showed you the paperwork I'll be presenting, and either you misled me or you were misled. But you have the responsibility because you are paid as a professional to bring this back to the notice of the courts. If it's going to cause you any problems professionally, you have to decide where you are sitting. 
that was 2.4 of your own code of practice. Check 2.2 as well. That is the first lesson in saying you are ultimately the most powerful people. The day in court for the gentleman who was growing cannabis to... He gives it away. Uh, to people who aren't very well. Uh, the law says that nobody can have any cannabis for any reason. So um, you 12 people were acting more or less as important as the 12 disciples for Jesus. But the Pharisees simply said, this is a stupid man and the further we go, the more trouble he's going to be in. He's simple, he has no legal experience and we're going to do the best we can from him by ending this case and sending him away. That gentleman's already put in an appeal I know he wasn't fined a single penny uh, and uh, he had, uh, well Monday he'll be actually in court again because uh, when he sees something wrong he, he likes to do something about it and he was arrested uh, in Manchester for walking too slowly on a public highway. So if they find him guilty of this charge of walking too slowly on a public highway his 12 month suspended sentence will kick in and he will go to prison for this. Oh, he got into a bit of trouble. Now. I know Lisa has been trained legally as a solicitor and as a barrister and I know this is something that she's always enjoyed and always wanted to do but do you realize how far down the rabbit hole you were going? When you decided that you must play the game of control. Without that misleading information to myself and to the gentleman in the court, then I would have read my evidence. It could have been seen by the jury and they could have made a decision whether the case needs to go further. So if there were any truths in what this gentleman was saying, we could carry forward. But the judge himself, he is also stuck. He can't try any law in the court. That's his job to enforce it. And he can't try any truth, no law or fact. Now they call them facts because you can't discredit these things. You are asked to hand your control over to that judge. And then all he has was the fact. Was the man guilty? You said yes, that became fact. He has to be tried for it. And the law? The law has to be exercised. Well, not taken out for a run or out for a ride, but it needs to be finished off. So, lesson three in how to be a master is for 12 people that I met, 25th of the 7th, 2014, at the Crown Court of Nottingham. And I'm afraid if this made you angry, well, as I say, nobody really wanted to look across the courtroom. I wasn't expected to be there till after lunch. You have all the right, and in fact I can't say duty, all the right to say that you were misled. And you know what I said about you, Lisa. If you think that you were doing right things, finished. Simple as that. We're having problems on little low level laws at the moment. Little low level laws. And if I have to deal with those, and I'm already finding out people believe you've got no rights to appeal on those, the next port of call I thought would be the courts. Are you bringing the courts into disrepute? Are you them? Are you us? Are you me? Are you you? It's not so confusing when you see a line being drawn about who's going to be who. Practicing barrister. Mm. Oh, no, no. No, this is not right. I'd rather you discover this on your own. But, unfortunately, um, the doctor, have you noticed for the first time ever, has been very quiet, uh, has realised that some of this abuse might be because people are scared. Someone has too much knowledge. Um, Jimmy Savile, Lord Denning, and Noddy. And then you will see the very start of a very promising and honest career. And I'm hoping we finish this off. Oh, it's very good. Not meant to talk at all. Check out the link below. You'll have a giggle. But, uh, Noddy gets into trouble. Mr. Plod and Little Noddy. Book 22. All aboard for Toyland. I don't want you to be the fat controller. 
If this is causing you any grief, I can't talk more in case it jeopardises me going back into the court with the evidence that I have. And I have some. I'm standing here. Oh, actually, I'm sitting here now. Lesson three. Do not become them. Do not give away your strength. Those 12 people in the court, even the judge, and put the pressure on them to get control. Control, you don't need control, you just need truth. And any person who comes through the courts with this truth is stomped on because the whole system can't cope with the truth. And if you know it, now what are you going to do? So it's not about me being late. I wasn't late, I was on time. It's about the information you were given. You can go further, you can say no. Doesn't matter either way because the gentleman will be going for appeal. But seeing what happened, any one of those jurors is now able to talk about the case. You know where I am, or do you know where I am? You'll find it from the other videos. Come and have a chat. But uh, this code of conduct, it belongs to the Crown Prosecution. My two examples of how Crown, <laughs> Crown Prosecution is breaking its code of conduct 2.4. We'll do another lesson. But that was lesson three. You do need firm examples of reality and what's happening. Lesson four will show you there is a choice. We either are able to use a court system, whether you want to or not after this, or the councils and controllers have taken away every single right you have for any fairness. So, happened before, Germany. Somebody decides what you're doing and they enforce it with bits of paper. If you don't do as you're told, you're locked up and put in prison. Whatever they say, no matter how silly it is, you apparently have no right of appeal. I'll show you that you do. But this time, I do wish for somebody to come forward and help. Thank you, all 13 of you. Maybe the judge might back down. I very much doubt it. He's got control. Oh, you weren't there when he cleared the court. Since I said these things, he also cleared the court of the public gallery and the jury. I then re-entered the court and tried to approach the judge as a friend of the court to explain that not all the evidence means he threatened to have me arrested right there and then if I did not leave immediately. So it's not easy for me to do it, but you were invited to the courts as witnesses. Again, all 12 of you, I'm sorry if it made you feel cross or anything else, but if you were guided in such a way to give another man control, that man wouldn't let me speak. Will you? Lesson three endeth. Thank you.